Hello everyone, I'm Tio Chandra. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm an undergraduate student of State Polytechnic of Malang, and I'm in my third year of study. Oh yeah, my major. My major is Electrical System Engineering. So I would like to present a topic to fulfill my final semester exam assignment. That is, 150 kilovolt tower equipment and accessories for tension type WWCWD with two circuits line. So, wait, what? Let's start. What is tower? Tower, a transmission tower, is a tall structure used to support an overhead power line. In electrical grids, they are used to carry high voltage transmission lines that transmit electric power from generating station to electrical substation. SUTT, or in Indonesia, is Saluran Udara Tegangan Tinggi, or in English, high voltage overhead line that is the transmission or distribution of electrical energy between regions. In my lovely country, Indonesia, where the operating voltage is between 70 kV and 150 kV. For network configuration, generally single or double circuits, where one circuit consists of three phases with three or four wires and one natural conductor wire. On the Java Island, the 150 kV SUTT transmission has been installed in an interconnection ring system. Meanwhile, in other large islands, it's being developed into an interconnection system ring. The transmission is connected by interconnection ring to avoid a large voltage drop. So the, the voltage at the transmission end becomes small. Next, electrical tower components. In general, an electric tower consists of the first foundation. Foundation is a reinforced concrete construction to tie the tower leg or stop to the earth. There are two types of tower foundation. The first is normal type. The second is stake type. Next component is top. Stop is the lowest part of the power foot installed together with the installation of the foundation and tied together with the foundation. This is the picture. Next, leg. Power legs that are connected between the stop and tower body. On uneven ground, it's necessary to increase or decrease the leg height while the body must remain the same level of the surface. Now, the right here is the standard for the 150 kV tower type according to Indonesian state electricity company. There are many types tower with the function. Here we discuss about uh, tower type double B, double C, double D with tension type, yeah. So it has, they have deviation angle for double B is three degrees until 20 degrees. And for type double C, it is 20 degrees until 60 degrees. And for type double D, it is 60 degrees until 90 degrees. Now, for the function, the explanation for the suspension tower. It's a support tower, and this tower almost completely bears gravity and generally has no turning angle. And then for the tension tower, or we know as angle tower, this tower bears a tensile force greater than gravity and generally has a turning angle. Electrical tension towers are used at location where the angle deviation is more than degree of five. This tower are also known as angle tower, as I said before, 
and the tower are designed to take the tensional load of the cable. Tension tower are mostly used for turning points and for the section isolate location. Next is tower body. Tower body is the lower tower body that is connected between the legs and the upper tower body. The tower height requirement can be done by adjusting the tower body height by adding or subtracting. This is the tower body. And then next is cross arm. Cross arm is the part of the tower that function as a place to hang or connect the pass wire insulator and lightning wire clamp. In general, in general the cross arm is triangular, except for the tension type tower that we discussed which has a large standing angle in the shape of a rectangle. The next is peak of transmission tower. The portion above the top cross arm is called peak of transmission tower. Generally, a sealed wire connected to the tip of this peak here. And then next is peak of Transmission tower. The portion between tower body and peak is known as peak of transmission tower. This portion of the tower holds the cross arm that we discussed the slide before. On the slide before. Next is isolator on transmission pole. The type of insulator used in the transmission line is a porcelain or glass type. Now, According to its construction, the insulator has the following types. The first is pin type insulator, and then line post type insulator. Next is train type insulator on high voltage overhead line or SPTT, usually using suspension isolator that hang. Suspension, it, it, it is. Next is conducting wire. Conducting wire serves to distribute electric current from one place to another. Indonesian State Electricity Company, or in Bahasa, we say it Perusahaan Listrik Negara, PLN, that is stipulates that the maximum operating temperature for the high voltage overland, overhead line or SUTT conductor is 75 degrees Celsius. The types of conducting wire that can be used in transmission line are copper and aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum conductor wire consists of various types, that is AAC or all aluminum conductor. This conductor wire is made of aluminum. And then next, triple AC. Aluminium alloy conductor. This conductor wire is made of aluminium alloy. The next is ACSR, aluminium conductor steel reinforced. Steel wire called aluminium conductor wire. And then the last is ACAR, aluminium conductor alloy reinforced. Aluminium conductor wire reinforced with alloys. Next, Earth or ground wire. Its function is to protect the conductor wire or pass wire from direct lightning strikes. The ground wire is laid over the pass wire and is usually made of cheaper steel. This is the picture of earth or ground wire and usually it is put in here. This Point. Next is tower yard. Tower yard is tower footprint area whose area is measured from the projection above the foundation excavated soil. Usually between three to eight meters beyond the stop, depending on the tower type. Next, it is 
accessories nah, based on their role as supporting component, accessories are divided into three. Accessories in the high and extra high voltage overhead lines transmission systems are a component that support the insulation function, construction function, and occupational safety and health, or in Bahasa, we say the katiga function of the system. There are three. The first is insulator accessories. Those are all supporting components so that the insulator can be mechanically connected to the tower and conductor. Next is climbing accessories or construction function. That is supporting components that make it easier for officers to climb to the top of the tower. The third is occupational safety and health or katiga accessories. It is supporting components that aim to provide hazard warnings and information around the transmission line. Next, we discuss the insulator accessories. This component consists of the first is suspension clamp. Suspension clamp is a tool that is attached, attached to the conducting conductor to the hanging insulator equipment. This is the picture. It is served to hold the conducting conductor on the suspension pole. The next is armor rod. Armor rod. This component serves to protect the aluminum conductor from mechanical stress point junction with insulator on the, on the tower suspension. Armor rod is a wire that is placed on the conductor as a coating before installing suspension clamp and damper to reduce fatigue on the conductor to the vibration on the conductor. Next, it is socket clavis. So cat clavis, this component serves to connect the pole insulator with the hot yoke on the tower tension or suspension. The fourth is bolt clavis. Bolt clavis, this component function to connect an insulator socket with a link. And then socket link bolt. This component function to connect the insulator socket with cold yoke on the tower tension. And then spacer. Spacer, this component function as a separator or spanner and at the same time as a vibration damper on the conductor. Here is there are two picture of spacer. This is spacer with four conductor and this is spacer with two conductor. The next is clefis clamp suspension. This component function as a liaison between the clamp suspension and the yoke. Next, here is turn buckle or span screw. This component serves to adjust the thickness or looseness of the pull of the conductor. Next, this is damper. This component function as a vibration damper in the conductor. Mm. Then, clamp op. PGW. This component function as an OPGW conductor holder mounted on the tower and protects the conductor from being stretched. Then the next is extension link. Extension link, this component serves to connect the traverse with the yoke on the cold end side of the tension tower. Then it is adjuster link. Adjuster link. This component serves to connect the yoke to the conductor and obtain the desired sagging. And then, get and press. This is the picture. This component serves to turn off and connect the conductor with the insulator on the cold tower side. This is compression A. Compression that and press this component function as a conductor holder on the tension tower. And this is what clamp connecting conductor. This component serves 
as a liaison between the connecting connector and the conductor. And next, this is cycle. This component serves to connect the link with the tower. Continue, this is counterweight. This component serves to reduce shocks to the connecting conductor or conductor. This is long link. Long link. Hmm, it's funny. <laughs> this component serves to extend the distance between the insulator and the side of the tower. Well, continue. We are going to climbing accessories. Climbing accessories, as I said before, it's supporting components that make it easier for officers to climb to the top of the tower. The component is only one that is step pulled. Step pulled is a pole that is installed from the top of the ACD. ACD is anti-climbing device. I will uh, discuss later. And uh, along the body of the tower to the tower body and traverse of the lightning conductor. It serves as a foothold for officer when going up or down from the tower. And then occupational safety and health, or in Bahasa is Katiga. This is the accessories. And as I said before, also it is supporting components that aim to provide hazard warning and information around the transmission line. The first is climbing barrier or anti-climbing device or ICD that I said before. Remember? Yeah. Of course, climbing barrier serves to prevent an authorized people from climbing the tower. Climbing barriers are made sharp, 10 centimeters apart from each other and installed at its leg of the tower under the danger scenes. The next is this, the livery scenes and pole number. This component serves to identify the tower status, tower number, fast sequence, conductor or path, and tower foot grounding resistant value. Next is danger sign. This component serves to provide a high voltage hazard warning. And this is the red is ball sign. Ball sign. This component serves to signal for Facing aircraft attached to the lightning conductor. This is the last, I think, aviation light. That is a warning sign in the form of a light against air traffic. It serves to signal the aircraft pilot that there is a transmission conductor. A liaison light installed on the tower get supply from a low voltage network. Well, the conducting conductor gets supply by an induction system from the conducting conductor. Now, here I have the picture that is the location of the components on the actual tower. This is uh, the spacer and then earth wire or ground wire. This is the cross arm, and then the damper, the location is here, and then this is the conductor, the insulator, and this is the tower. Well, uh, all of material, I got it from this reference, these links. I also, I will also put this reference link on my description. So you can access it when you see my videos. So thank you so much for enjoying my video. I am um, maybe this video be useful for all of you guys. Thank you very much. See you on the next video. Hasta la vista. See you.